Anyway, I'd like to welcome everybody to the call. We're going to get started with news you can use. And the question of the day is, are the interest rate increases that the Fed has been um, pushing on the market having any effect? Are they getting inflation under control or is it continuing to spiral out of control? With regard to our market, the housing market, I would say starting to work. And there's three things that I could point you to. Uh, first thing, number one, the housing prices um, are primarily, have been primarily pushed by demand and then supply costs. In other words, when they're building a house, there's a lot of things, lumber being the chief uh, component, but also wiring, plumbing, things like that to go into it. And those things had gone up dramatically because of inflation. To give you an example, lumber costs one year ago were $1,800, almost $1,800 per thousand board feet. That was among the highest points that it was. Yesterday, lumber was $780 per thousand square feet. So it's down over 60% from where it was. It's, it's having a dramatic impact on the cost of lumber. Why? Well, because they're not building as much anymore um, because interest rates are too high and people can't afford to have homes. And so the builders aren't building as much as they used to. Which brings up point number two. A year ago, it was about a 15-month 15 15 wait for the average house to be built. It took about that long. Part of that was due to COVID and all the issues regarding things on the water, couldn't get uh, uh, warehoused and couldn't get into the supply chain. But a lot of it also was just the fact uh, that things were too expensive and they were trying to drag things out uh, to see if perhaps costs would come down. They didn't until now. Um, Anyway, 15 month wait on a, on a new house he ordered a year ago. Today, it's about six months nationally. So that has come down. And the third thing is interest rates were creeping up and this would be an FHA type rate. Uh, we're cre creeping close to 6%. Um, and they are hovering right at 5% right now. They are, in, in fact, the market is concerned that there is a danger, they call it, of the prices of interest uh, money going below 5% um, by tomorrow or next week. Why? Once again, the demand is down. Uh, when the prices are high and interest rates high, the demand drops and eventually that pulls everything down. And so um, less demand for new mortgages, new loans, because there's less buyers out there buying houses. Money goes on sale like everything else, like lumber, um, you know, and houses that are being built. These things all go on sale, prices drop. Um, the, the chain of time that it takes to get these things accomplished shrinks because there's less demand. So I would say based on those three factors that yes, uh, the interest rate hikes are having an effect. Now, in other parts of the economy, we're seeing some manipulation by forces beyond the normal supply and demand. For example, the oil thing I believe is being manipulated. Um, and things like crypto are being manipulated out there in the marketplace. Stocks and bonds have always been manipulated. Uh, but And we can't do a lot about those kind of things. But some of the supplies, lumber, food, oil, uh, you know, to the extent that we can use natural gas instead of gasoline that's brought in from primarily now overseas, even though we're self-dependent on it, uh, these things are definitely having an effect. So I think you're going to see continue to see more increases in the interest rate by the Fed and, and at a pretty expedited rate, half a point bumps where they'd normally go a quarter point bumps. Um, but I believe, I'm seeing that it is definitely having an effect. Now, how long and how deep will that affect our housing market? That time will tell. We won't know uh, immediately, but things, in, in my opinion, look to be heading in the right direction. All right. One last thing that we want to start with uh, here on News You Can Use. First of all, I'd like everybody real quick, if they could, to hop on the chat. And I want everybody's best guess as to what it would cost uh, in income in the United States to afford the average price house. In other words, how much income would you need on a yearly basis to be able to buy the average price house? So if we could just spend a minute, um, Ian's saying 75000 yeah, in other words, you have to make 75000 a year to, to be able to afford the average price house. Now, of course, it's going to vary state by state. We're going to show you a map here in a second, but I'm going to give everybody's guess. 
Uh, Michelle Roberts, 75. If I had to look at this, I would have guessed probably 80 to 90, actually saying 100. Uh, Lionel, 65. All right, let's see. Anybody else? Other guesses? Let's go ahead and put that map up, Ashley. Um, Randy's saying 90,000. Let's take a look. And we're going to 110, Stephen. Thank you, everybody, for guesses. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this. Corey's 85. Uh, this is showing, may have to blow this up. We'll start out here on the left coast, uh, the land of fruits and nuts, California. $120,120 is the salary needed to afford the average price house. Ish is $100,000. Okay, let's go, let's go to Ishland. Let's go over here to South Carolina. Uh, in South Carolina, Ishmael, $58,840. That's considered uh, very, very good. Georgia, 59,000. New York State, 90, almost 92,000. Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, $40,800. That's pretty darn cheap. Ohio, believe it or not, and we've had some, several clients that have had some very good success lately uh, in the state of Ohio doing deals, only takes $38,400. You can buy a beautiful mansion uh, in Ohio in the suburbs of some of the big cities for the cost of a box of popcorn. Uh, it's it's unbelievable how inexpensive it is to live there, or at least to buy housing there. Uh, Missouri, forty two thousand. Texas, sixty six thousand. Arizona, sixty seven. Colorado, hundred thousand two hundred dollars. The most expensive state is, I believe, Hawaii, and I'm not sure it's on here, but it's even more than California or New York. Um, can you see it on your copy of that, Ash? What am I looking for? Hawaii. Can you see it on? I don't uh, see it. Give me one sec here. I'll see if I can scroll and find it for you. Uh, Hawaii, 153, almost 154. 153,000. So Hawaii is the most expensive, and I believe Ohio is the least expensive. So um, what does this tell you? And the quality of homes, I can tell you, because I've been all over this country, and I've had homes all over this country, the quality is almost the, the difference between something here and something in New York and something in Arkansas, it's minimal. The, the difference, even though the prices are much more, the, the quality is, is minimal differences. So, you know, it's a three time, in the case of Hawaii, it's a five time better financial decision or you only need one fifth of the same amount of money in Ohio to buy that same house as you would in Hawaii. So what, what this is also doing and what this also shows is part of part of the big reason behind this mass migration trend that we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of Californians, for example, for the last two years in a row, California has lost population. It's the only time in its 150, 60 year history, 170 year history, that we've lost population. But the last two years, we sure did. And it's because people moved out and they're moving to these other states where you can get things um, a, a lot less expensively. Um, I've had two sisters, one moved to Idaho and the other moved to Texas. They got tired of California shenanigans and they moved. In both cases, they bought less expensively in those states than they sold here for the same house. Um, people now are moving into, you know, further east, they're going to Tennessee, they're going to Florida, they're going to the Carolinas, uh, they're going to the upper Midwest. A lot of people are going to places like Ohio where it's very inexpensive, Indiana, um, and even Wisconsin. So it's very, very interesting. And I think this is going to account for, uh, once again, kind of an artificial twist in the housing market because we're not in, in a typical housing market, ups and downs. We don't count migration. And migration amounts for a large percentage of what happens. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to, to get you guys up to speed as we see these things change. Uh, going forward, but I think migration's a factor that now needs to come into consideration when everybody's looking at, um, you know, how markets are doing. I think uh, the migratory patterns of people in the United States is having a big, big effect on uh, pricing, availability, building, and, you know, supply material, material supply costs out there. So anyway, that's kind of our news you can use for today. It's a little bit of a hodgepodge, but um, that's the news that we've got today is kind of a hodgepodge uh, uh, mix of, of good and bad. Uh, it seems to be trending good. And uh, once again, I'll keep you guys up to date.
on everything. All right.